Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. We are ready for another Growing in Grace, another gig podcast right here with Mike Kapler, that's me, Joel Brzezinski, that's him right over there, about five miles from me. Hello. <laughs> but I can see him in the spirit, as they used to say, <laughs> where, I came, where I came from. <laughs> well, I can see you in your Redskins hat on that Skype photo that you got there. Oh, do I, I got to get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really do. <laughs> well, I need a, I'll, I'll keep the Redskins theme as long as they still have their name, but... Yeah, really. uh, I You've need had, a new picture on there because you've had that uh, up since long before I, the football season started. I know, too. and I, I am so much better looking than that thing. And you're the only one who can see it, so <laughs> people will just have to take my word for it. Yeah, they'll have to take your word for it because you're <laughs> completely honest in that statement. There, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's a big ad on there for some sort of a Volkswagen right next to you too. I'm just, so that's the picture I'm looking at. Well, that bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a Volkswagen Jetta one time, and I just loved that thing. Oh, it was yeah. far for Nugent big time. <laughs> well, I've, I've got a Hogan's Heroes series on DVD. That's the closest I've had to a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of this. I let's talk nothing. Grace here for a little bit. Oh, okay. Might as well, since hey, we're here. Hey, Joel, let's talk about behavior here for a minute, because that's something that gets talked a lot about in legalistic circles. And certainly, we think behavior is an important component uh, when it comes to the Christian life, but probably maybe not in the same sense that other people would communicate behavior. And so hopefully you'll give us a chance to take a program or two and uh, talk this out just a little bit. And I think you're going to be excited to hear some of what we're going to be sharing. Can I go back in, into yesteryear, like about 20, 15, 20 years ago? I had a friend of mine, and we worked in radio together. You knew him. He was a young man at the time, probably college age, but he would go to this youth group, and it was a church that, just being honest with you, they have real legalistic roots, but uh, you know, they had some nice people there, but I'm just saying. And so he would, go to, he, said, he would tell me that he would constantly go home from the youth group wondering if he was even a Christian, hmm. because wow. sometimes the subject would come up that if your behavior didn't somehow coincide with what you believed, then it's possible that you just weren't sincere when you decided to believe in Christ or to receive Christ as Savior, that perhaps you weren't sincere in your heart and that there's a lot of people out there who just pray the prayer and then they just go on living whatever way they want to and then maybe they just never really received Christ to begin with. And he would start questioning himself because he probably wasn't living up to their standard, uh, his standard, or whatever he thought God's standard might have been at that time for his life. And so, so I want to start with that and just point something out here when it comes to um, behavior, because there's been a, a lot of things said about that when it comes to if people are really sincere when they invite Christ into their life, then they will start <laughs> to live the way they are supposed to. So your thoughts on this? Well, yeah, there's lots of different ways to go with that, but I know I've I've been in those shoes myself, and I have questioned my own salvation. I have wondered if, uh, at various points in my Christian walk, I've wondered if uh, the things that I've done have disqualified me somehow. I guess uh, what that points to is that my focus, and this is just one way to go with this, is that my focus was on me, and it wasn't on the life of Christ in me. My focus was totally and completely the opposite of what Christ had come for, because Christ had come to give me new life, Christ had come to save me from my sins, and to not count my sins against me, and so the reality is, is that it's not about what I do or don't do, but it is all about what Christ has done. And so right there, I eventually came to find out, thankfully, that my behavior, whether it's as perfect as it can be, or whether it's as totally horrible as it could ever be, none of that affects my salvation. My best behavior doesn't impress God, because the only thing that impressed him 
was the finished work of Christ and the fact that I believed in that and that what that did was it gave me new life. I went from being a dead person to being alive in Christ. Nothing to do with my behavior. So just knowing that much was enough to help me to understand that, wow, no matter what I ever do, it's it's not about that behavior. Like you say, behavior, yeah, sure. There are certain things that aren't fruitful, that aren't expedient, that aren't helpful. But when it comes to our relationship with God in eternal life, it has nothing to do with those things. All right, so just to follow up on this now so that we can keep people connected with us here, if it's not about behavior, if that's not the main focus, then what what is it? Yeah, and that's... I'm asking you. Yeah, and I think to me, this is where, you know, at the beginning of the podcast, you told people stick with us because, you know, they're going to like this. And this is where, for me, it gets exciting. It gets even so much more, so far more exciting than just simply knowing that my sins are forgiven and taken away. Because again, that stuff in and of itself, wonderful. It's awesome to have that knowledge that our sins have been taken away and don't count against us. That is wonderful, wonderful news. Sure. But even so much greater than all of this stuff is that not only were our sins taken away, not only does our behavior not disqualify us from eternal life, but the fact that Jesus Christ himself is our life. We died and became something new, something brand new, a new creation. Jesus Christ himself is our life. And that means that all of this other stuff is so far below the brand new life that Christ has given us. Yeah, we try to get it backwards sometimes. So it's not that we're opposed to uh, behavior that would be considered good. We're not against that. It's just that people get this turned around backwards again. And so it's, it's about life. I'm looking in 1 John 5.13. He says this, these things, because this is toward the end of his book here in 1 John, these things I have written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. We were talking, Joel, where I I had heard somebody bring this up before, and I, I find it extremely interesting that if you look in the Greek, this word eternal, eternal life, we often think of that as something that will last forever from this point forward. But if you look that up in the Greek, you'll find that it's, it's more than that. It's life that had no beginning and life that had no end. Well, I've had a beginning. You've had a beginning. But guess who didn't have a beginning? A beginning that never had a beginning. It was God, of course. And so this eternal life that we now possess, it's not just that I'm going to live forever. It's life that I possess that has always been. Why? Because it's his life in me. It's his life in you. We've been recreated, as as you were talking about, Joel, brand new creations in Christ. Life that is renewed day by day that doesn't get old or age. So this isn't about behavior. It's, it's about new life in us. It's about, uh, by faith, having peace with God because of faith, because of trusting in what he did and not in what we do. Unfortunately, too many people start getting it turned around, thinking that they need to trust in their behavior, that somehow that, that's, the, that's the signal that verifies everything, and, and it's not. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory, this, this new life, and when we stop trying to produce our own fruit and, <laughs> and start relying and trusting in and resting in the life, the eternal life that's in us now, then we can bear the fruit as the Spirit of God produces it through us. Remember, it's called the fruit of the Spirit. It's not our fruit. That's, I mean, and that is so key to all this, is that it is the life of Christ. It is the fruit of of the Spirit, because we were indeed made a new creation. You know, Paul talks about that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and the truth about that new creation, I think I shared this a few weeks ago, I can't remember for sure, but the word new there isn't like 
you know, um, you wear your shoes out and so you get a new pair of shoes. It's basically just your shoes are worn out and so you just get a new one, a new pair of the same thing, basically. But no, it's a word that means something completely different. The old thing was destroyed and you get something that is completely different than what it was before. So our old life in Adam died, went upon the cross with Christ, and we received a brand new life that, you know, the old life in Adam was corruptible and was not eternal. But this new life that we have in Christ is incorruptible and is eternal, like you say, without beginning and without end, that which has always been. You would think that that doesn't describe us, because we know that we were born at a certain point in time, but the thing is, we did receive brand new life, the very life of Christ, and that's what makes all the difference in the world, because it's not about our behavior. Our behavior is not what gave us that new life. It was the gift of God. We received this brand new life, and when we do see changed behavior for the good, it's not because we struggled and strived in our own efforts to try to get new behavior. Let's just say you're struggling with something in life. You want something in your life to change, and you've struggled and strived. You've tried for so long to get this thing to change, and it just hasn't worked out. On the other hand, when you realize that Christ himself is your life, despite what you ever do, you might begin to see things change because it is the fruit of him. It's the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of his life in us. And it's really a side effect. It's a fruit of the life of Christ in us rather than uh, our own efforts that have uh, made that happen. Right. Just don't get too focused on the change because my outward behavior, my moods, all of that stuff begin to change. They're inconsistent. Right. But there's one thing that is consistent, and that's the life of Christ in me, and that's what I trust and rest in. That really is it. I mean, that's really what we're trying to get at in this podcast. The good news that we have been made new, that we have eternal life, and that life is the life of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, in, in John 17, he, he was praying to the Father, and he said, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's what eternal life is. That's what we have. We know the Father. We know the Son. We know God. That's what eternal life is. It has nothing to do with our behavior. And so if we can get our focus off of our behavior, get our focus off of what we do and don't do, and get our eyes on the truth that we have eternal life, that we've been made new creations, what such good news it is for us to wake up every day and remind ourselves of. We are children of the living God, and we have eternal life because of the gift of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And as we've always talked about, that eternal life doesn't come about because of the way that we behave. You know, today, organized Christianity has kind of placed an emphasis on behavior modification and external change. Well, next week on Growing in Grace, we're going to talk about that transitioning from performance-based Christianity to belief, faith. Next week, right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.